ShopSmith haters probably won't believe this, but in comparison to standalone tools, I saved over $2,600 last year when I bought my ShopSmith Mark 7. In this video, I'll compare the specifications and purchase price of my ShopSmith Mark 7 as compared to seven standalone tools of equivalent value, and I'll show you exactly where that $2,600 savings comes from. And I looked at the various tool websites looking for tools that were equivalent in some way. No, they're not gonna be exact feature for feature equivalency, but overall the quality and the offering of features are competitive with ShopSmith. Let's jump into the comparison. So let's go ahead and get started with the 12 inch disc sander. This is gonna be a little strange because I had a hard time finding a 12 inch disc sander with variable speed. Now the only disc sander that is currently sold today that I could find is from Burr King. They offer a 1.5 horsepower disc sander for $2,200. And you can get that disc sander with a three phase variable speed motor, but they don't quote that price on their website. So that'll obviously be a lot more than the $2,200. So instead I'm gonna compare the ShopSmith disc sander to a 12 inch disc sander that's no longer sold, but it's still listed on the Granger website. It's the Dayton 802G25. And I can't score every category because there just isn't much information. The only information I'm getting is basically from the nameplate that's visible in the picture on the website. And the price listed there is $1,500. That could be, you know, like pre-pandemic prices for all I know. It could be that if that were sold today, it'd be more like $2,000. But we're gonna go with this, this sander and we're gonna go with this price just so I can be as fair as possible here. It is variable speed, but the ShopSmith has a greater variable speed. So I'm giving the ShopSmith an extra point there. It's not reversible. The ShopSmith does reverse direction. So I'm giving the ShopSmith an extra point there. The only area where the Dayton is beating the ShopSmith is in the table material. It's got a cast iron table compared to the ShopSmith's aluminum table. And like I said in the last video, uh, I think it's pretty common understanding in the woodworking community that we kind of all prefer cast iron surfaces. So in comparison to the ShopSmith, the Dayton scored a 21 in the points analysis and the ShopSmith a 29. If you know of a 12 inch disc sander that's a better competitor to the ShopSmith Mark 7 disc sander, please let me know in the comments. I'd love to check it out and uh, update my comparison here. So let's move on to the table saw. I'm gonna be looking at the Grizzly G0962A40. I won't go spec by spec here, but basically the scoring was 35 to 37 in favor of ShopSmith, which is a very close score. So for $900, you're getting one heck of a table saw here. It, it looks like a really nice unit. And there's some positives and negatives uh, on both sides of the equation here, but I believe that the table saws are relatively competitive. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the drill press. For the disc sander and the table saw, I did not require that the machine have a digital controlled DVR motor. But for the drill press, I am gonna require that. So I'm gonna be comparing to the Nova Viking 16 inch floor drill press, which is a Technitool model T33237. And you can look through the specs on the screen there, but basically uh, the Technitool is scoring a 36 compared to the ShopSmith 41 and it's coming in on the Grizzly website at $1,350. Let's move on to the lathe. I do think that a digitally controlled motor would be a huge advantage here, but I'm not gonna require it for the lathe. Basically, I'm following the mercy rule. If I were to go to one of the Nova digitally controlled lathes, we'd be using up 60% of the ShopSmith budget here, so um, it, it would just be brutal. So instead, we're gonna look at the Nova 1624-2 lathe, which is a Technic Tool model number T32351. And it compared a 26 compared to the ShopSmith 32 in the scoring analysis. A viewer in the comments in the last video noted that the spindle size on the ShopSmith is 5 8 inch, compared to some of the other lathes which have an inch, or in this case, an inch and a quarter diameter spindle. And his point as an avid wood turner is that the more robust spindle, particularly for bull turning, is advantageous. I'm going to go ahead and take his word for it. I'm not a, a big turner, uh, particularly not bulls for sure. But I, I'm not going to argue the point. I went ahead and knocked a point off here on the shopsmith side. And also this Nova lathe has a really nice feature. It has a swivel head. So the head will swivel out to the side so you can turn 
larger uh, diameter items. It does have that feature and ShopSmith does not, so I gave ShopSmith a zero there and the Technotool Nova a three. So hopefully you can see that I'm being pretty fair in the scoring here, but uh, like I said, the ShopSmith beat the Nova uh, 26 to 32 in favor of the ShopSmith. And the price of this lathe is $1,350. So let's go ahead and move on to horizontal boring. I looked and looked and looked some more. I could not find a decent horizontal boring machine that was competitive to the Shopsmith, quite frankly. So in the last video, I uh, compared the Shopsmith to a Grizzly G0540 horizontal boring machine. I'm gonna go ahead and continue to compare it here, but honestly, I don't think there's really any comparison. I think the Shopsmith horizontal boring is just got a lot better features and the scoring bears that out at uh, 25 points to the Grizzly to 36 to the Shopsmith. So that's a pretty big percentage swing there in favor of the Shopsmith. But I guess the good news is that the Grizzly is only $725. So the price of these standalone tools is adding up pretty quickly. Okay, let's move on to the Shaper. Again, I'm going back to Grizzly for this, and one of the reasons is, is I'm really impressed with Grizzly's website, the amount of technical specification information they have on there, and their manuals. Most of their manuals actually have woodworking instruction in there, not just sort of legalese from the lawyers and you know how to bolt the machine together, but actually how to use the machine and, and accomplish woodworking operations. So I'm gonna look at the Grizzly G0510Z. There are two items where the Grizzly does beat the Shopsmith in this regard. One is that it can handle a little larger cutter diameter at two and seven eighths compared to Shopsmith's two and one eighth. It's also got a cast iron table compared to the Shopsmith's aluminum table. So I gave Grizzly extra points in those two categories. However, the total scoring still comes out in favor of the Shopsmith 36 to 41, but it's a pretty nice shaper there from Grizzly. I can't say anything bad about it, and it goes for $750. And the seventh and final tool is the router. And I'm imagining that this one's gonna create a little bit of a controversy. So I'm gonna go into a little more explanation here to just kind of set the stage. Many people hold the opinion, including many longtime Shopsmith owners and users, that the Shopsmith is not suitable as a router. And the main reasoning they give behind that is because many of the half inch handheld routers are running at 20,000 to 23,000 RPM and the Shopsmith only runs at 10,000 RPM. And since it only runs at half the speed, it, it can't possibly do routing. And I won't claim that it does a perfect job in every scenario. For example, highly detailed profiles, I think you probably would be better off using a high speed handheld router. But for a lot of joinery work, which is what I do with the router, it's really perfect. So since Shopsmith has at least some capabilities as a router, we have to give it some credit. I found this combo on Amazon of a, a Bosch router and their MDF router table, which actually looks pretty nice. It looks like it's got a decent fence and decent dust collection. So I give the Bosch system a three in the RPM range. That's probably a more standard RPM range uh, compared to the Shopsmith. So the scoring comes out to 23 to 25 in favor of the Shopsmith. So really close. But I do admit if I were going to be doing a lots and lots of detailed profile routing, I might go ahead and spend the $330, uh, including free shipping from Amazon, to order this Bosch system. It looks pretty nice. So we'll go ahead and add that $330 to our total. So let's review. The Dayton disc sander is gonna cost $1,500. The 10 inch table saw is gonna cost 900. The drill press, 1350. The lathe, 1350. The horizontal boring machine, 1725. The shaper, 750. The router, $330. For a grand total of $6,905. That does not include shipping or tax. And I paid around $4,300 when I bought my Sharpsmith Mark 7 a little over a year ago. So that means I saved $2,605. So some of you are gonna say, yeah, but you know, I don't really wanna use the Shopsmith as a lathe. Or yeah, I don't really wanna use the Shopsmith as a table saw. Okay, don't then. Okay, so let's take those out of the equation. 
I'll subtract the 1350 for the lathe. I'll subtract the 900 for the table saw. That's $4,655 to buy the remaining five tools. I've still saved $355. <laughs> okay, this was a long one. Uh, thanks for sticking with me. I hope you found it interesting. I'm very happy to have saved $2,605 by purchasing my ShopSmith. And I know that the purchase price of a new ShopSmith isn't in everybody's budget. But if you have any mechanical maintenance skills at all, you can get a great value in the used market with either a ShopSmith Mark V, Model 510, or 520. And you can get access to, to all the same benefits that I'm experiencing. And I hope you're lucky enough to do so. Well, that does it for this video. I hope to see you in the next one. Bye.